In this half hour, you're going to find out why sometimes I keep my big mouth shut and wait for the experts to show up. And that's why we're joined by Steve Klein of Wyoming Liberty Group. And apparently, Steve, today is not a suit day, but it's a uh, sweater day on your part. It's very uh, casual, very casual. Very today. casual, yeah. I know. <laughs> Last time you had on this really nice suit, and it was freshly cleaned and all of that. So we've gone to the sweater. It's okay. It's a good casual look for you. I like that. Steve Klein is with Wyoming Liberty Group, and if I have this right from Maureen, we're going to find out what's been going on with the president of the University of Wyoming. Is that correct? Well, I wish I could give you the inside story, uh, Glenn, but I'm not oh. here at uh, I I'm not at UW. We only know what's going on. Plenty of plenty of academic drama. It's been all over the the news, as I'm sure you've heard. After uh, last week, after a uh, very short tenure, Robert Sternberg, the newly appointed uh, president, just this past July, uh, resigned his uh, position, and uh, immediately, it's almost an immediate. But where it goes toward my work is in the last legislative session, while they were. Uh, the U University of Wyoming trustees were conducting their search for president. Uh, they decided to make this process secret. Now, before previously, this had been an open search process. Uh, the media, as well as the public, would have a chance to uh, scrutinize the candidates who were being considered uh, by the trustees for the presidency. And uh, the media, in this case, they were denied. The, uh, the UW trustees actually voted uh, 9 to 1 with two excused. There's 12 total members who actually vote. Uh, nine to one to make this a secret search process and then the media and newspapers got together and they uh, decided to sue under Wyoming's open records laws to because Wyoming is a public institution University of Wyoming paid for by uh, among other people you and I Glenn yeah, right. and uh, so it, we, it's our right to know what's going on well, and let me then uh, to, to they won that lawsuit well to be fair to the what, what the university was saying to, to just to put their argument out there they were saying that there were some people who wanted to apply for the job but were afraid to because their current boss might find out about it. And so the university said they were afraid it might hurt the process in getting some good candidates. Yeah, and that's ex that's exactly what the consulting firm uh, said as well. It's all there. I was looking through the minutes of the meeting where they decided to do this. Um, and again, now the, the results kind of speak for themselves here. And again, this is not to say that uh, Robert Sternberg is entirely responsible for the fallout of what it went on after he was hired. Um, but to say this was uh, uh, certainly not the results uh, the, the trustees were, were looking for. And I argued at the time, and this was it was very interesting because you know they decided to do this. The media won their lawsuit to get the uh, to to get these names released as who they were considering, and then the the Wyoming legislature it happened to align almost perfectly with our last year's legislative session, and a few legislators got together and with with almost unim, unimpeded uh, force pushed through a law that then allowed the university trustees to keep this secret to exempt them and their search from the uh, open records process. So that's really, uh, that was just the funniest part of this, was that uh, I was there at the committee meeting, testified against this bill. Uh, you had testimony from university UW professors, from uh, lawyers, not just myself, and it all fell on deaf ears. I mean, really, the only support for this actually came from the UW trustees. And we've seen the results. Uh, I just... I'm still just in shock, and I understand that was also their key argument that you just mentioned was we need to get qualified candidates. Now, I'll admit, I you know I had never worked in academia, Glenn, but I went to school long enough to understand hell hath no fury like a bunch of academic drama. I mean, it's, right. it is kind of ridiculous. I mean, the, the, the squabbles that go on on any university campus, uh, the vitriol is like diametrically uh, uh, divergent with, with the, how important the issues they're arguing over actually are. I mean, it's this, you know, I imagine the University of Wyoming, like so many universities, is a few, you know, couple hundred acres surrounded by reality. Yeah. But nevertheless, I think it really speaks volumes that other places in academia, and as I testified at the time, if you're really good at your job, you should not, you should be expected to go out there and look at other opportunities. It's very silly to me to suggest that a president at another university or a provost at another university or any other person who's qualified for the job, why anybody would be surprised that they'd go and look around for other jobs. It doesn't mean that they're going to take that job, but they want to see what else is out there. I mean, this, this happens in the private sector, you know, all the time. And especially, I think it becomes more heightened in the public sector that you're looking around 
at other, especially from one public university to another. Um, well, it's very difficult to be, you know, de well, to deal with reality when you have a, a massive carbon sink in the middle of your compound. So I would <laughs> suggest they keep, but no, it's okay, so now we have to look for a new head. Well, first off, who's heading it up right now? Someone stepped in temporarily. And then the next question, of course, is, are we going to go through this same cloak process again, according to this new law? Well, the law, again, leaves the option on the trustees to decide. And it was interesting, to, you know, to their credit, at the, near the end of the process, the trustees did release the names of the three finalists before introducing. But by then, I'm pretty sure their minds were made up that it was going to be Robert Sternberg was their suggestion or their selection, excuse me. Um, so, but, I mean, that's the interesting point is that uh, Sternberg's contract, he's still going to get a total of $575,000 in compensation, despite not working a single day more at the University of Wyoming. Well, so, now, I got to ask that: did, did, was he fired or did he quit? Because I, you know, far far as I know, if you have a contract and you quit that contract, you're not going to get what's in the contract. That's how it usually works, doesn't it? Well, you can put your you can put uh, different pr provisions in the contract for for uh, resignation versus yeah. uh, uh, termination. Um, it, it's 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 kind of unclear. Uh, there's there's of course a tension there. Uh, Sternberg uh, stated that he'd lost the faith of the few of the trustees, and therefore he needed full support, and that's why he tendered his resignation. Uh, there's been rumors also that whether it might have been more forceful on the president, uh, the trustees' part. Uh, don't really know. And again, this this whole thing again remains so secret we're not even we don't even know we didn't know the details of his hiring and we're not going to really know the details of his departure either it seems and uh, to Sternberg you know now it seems there's a, a fallout the fallout is kind of well Sternberg does need to find himself another job so he's kind of playing a, a game of uh, uh, cover his uh, back as it were and uh, now saying things to different media outlets different excuses so I'm not even sure Sternberg can keep his story straight at this point Okay, I'm talking with Steve Klein from Wyoming Liberty Group about what is going on at the University of Wyoming right now. And then so the next question, well, it actually leads into the last one that I asked. They have to look for somebody else. Is there anything we can do to change the law? we got another legislation session coming up. Could we uh, file a lawsuit? What do you do to, to, to make this thing an open search again? I think I think it's a matter of political pressure. I think it's certainly... I mean, you know, Glenn, and again, I understand there's many, many issues going on uh, right now, and I'm not going to draw too tight a parallel here, but, um, you know, they're currently considering impeaching a public official for wasting a far, a far lower amount of money than $575,000 of public money. Okay. Um, so I'm really hoping that they take the wise steps, remove this from the process, and get us quality, gutsy candidates. Um, I said this in my testimony last year. Here, and it's like I was saying earlier, if you're qualified, you're not really, in, especially in a public position, you're not really putting your job at risk by going out there and fishing around. A great example, Michigan State University coach Mike Izzo. Uh, a champ, the guy wins championships in the NCAA. Uh, he was for a while being courted by the, the Cleveland Cavaliers to go and step up his game, join the National Basketball Association, and coach professionally. And it came out, and there was controversy. There was a lot of anger at Michigan State. There was a lot of uh, a lot of talk nationwide. Uh, but guess what? When Izzo decided not to take the job that he was offered by the Cleveland Cavs, he went back to state, and he was welcomed with open arms because he's an excellent coach, and he wins championships. Mm -hmm. So there Let may me, be, I mean... You just mentioned something. Let me put a little bug in your ear about something. I hadn't thought about this before, and it's a slight change of topic, but... Uh, on the uh, superintendent of public instruction issue, and by the way, I sent her a plaque that says Wyoming School Marm. It now sits on her desk because I'm sick of trying to pronounce that entire long name. But uh, let's take a look at how much money she's accused of moving around, which stayed within the system, by the way. How much money they spent investigating her and how much money they have to spend on this new guy that they hired. And I wonder, have they spent more money than she's accused of moving around? Yeah, I, you know, and I mean, again, because there's also some fundamental questions here about about citizen oversight. 
Um, and that's the, that's one of the I actually really like the idea of having university trustees. They you know they're they're ordinary citizens. It even says that right on the UW uh, the UW University of Wyoming's website about their trustees. And it's true. You have I mean probably far too many lawyers, but that's a government. But you also have a, a doctor. You have retired teachers. You have a civil engineer. So and they and they geographically represent our entire state. And these are people who have had uh, excellent careers and have lived good lives here in Wyoming. And they really are uh, citizens. I mean, some of them, I'm sure, have political experience. But that's that's to me, that's a really cool thing to say that we need to make sure that our university is answering to our state's needs. So I think that's a really that's a that's a great aspect of it. But then when it comes to doing one of their essential duties, which is appointing the president, they turn to a consulting firm. And I have I don't know offhand. I, I'm sure it's available. We can find out how much money was paid to this national search firm. But it well, seemed like Especially with this vote to stay firm, confidential. I, mean, uh, I, I would I'm was sorry? that firm in state or are they all out of state? I believe it's a fl I believe it was a Florida firm. Okay. Oh, so let's go to Florida to find someone for the okay. All right. <laughs> so that's the thing is that you have this essential responsibility that not only do you want to keep it secret, but it's it's you're kind of just I fear, and another reason we should have oversight is that they're not just swallowing what this firm is pay is is telling them to do. So that's really, I, I think that's what really speaks to it is that we are, you know, spending a lot of money to yeah. to have a, a point uh, an appointed board that really should represent and, and shouldn't be bringing all this this baggage of the professional establishment. And Glenn, that was the last thing that really really busted my hump and a lot of other people while this bill was being rammed through. And we're hearing this also in the Common Core fight is the educational establishment getting all up upset that people finally want to know what it is that's going on. Uh, the State Board of Education has kind of acted in much the same way, and they're improving to their credit. But the first time when people started speaking out on Common Core, certain legislators and certainly certain members of our State Board of Education are acting like it's some big affront that people would even dare want oversight over what it is they're doing with education in Wyoming. Well, especially citizen oversight, because that comes down to the local level. Which is usually citizens who you know leave their homes and their kids and go up the street to the local school to sit on a school board, which is exactly how it should be. Well, do you know when they're going to start? Last question for you here. Do you know when they're going to start looking for a new president? Has that process begun? I'm sure. I'm sure it's it's coming up, Glenn. I haven't heard anything. All right. Hey, good to see you again, Steve. Thanks a lot, Glenn.